politicized persecution that is nakedly apparent. What I want to do is dive a little bit deeper into what we actually learned today in that courtroom. What do we see in there? First of all, I learned a lot from being in there in person. It is one of the most depressing places I have been in my life, but it is fitting because the only thing more depressing than the environment of that courtroom is what's actually happening in there. It's straight out of a Kafka novel. The prosecution's main strategy appears to be to bore the jurors into submission. And if you look in that direction, sadly, it may appear to actually be working. Now, I would like for anybody, anybody here in the press, anybody at home, anybody in MSNBC or the media afterwards, to clearly state what exactly is the crime that Donald Trump committed. Oh, wait. We have not heard a good answer to that question. It has been vague until today. You heard Michael Cohen's testimony, after which I would say it is less clear than ever what that crime actually was. They'll say falsifying business records. Well, let's look at who did we learn falsified business records today? Again, what, hour, two hours felt like it became been seven hours of Michael Cohen talking about how he falsified business records. Okay, so you have a guy who has been a perjurer in the past that is now saying he falsified business records. What is the crime that Donald Trump committed? Now, it appears to be what they might allege is some sort of bookkeeping error or whatever. The real bookkeeping that we need accounting of is Judge Merchant's own family member collecting millions of dollars as a Democratic operative using the existence of this trial as a fundraising ploy for Democrats. This is unconscionable. Imagine if the same shoe fit the other foot. Imagine if it was Joe Biden that was on trial. You had a Republican judge whose son was collecting millions of dollars as a Republican operative. What would you all be saying? This would not be justice. This is injustice at its worst. So let's let's go even a layer deeper, right? Because let's go let's go even a layer deeper. Actually, the alleged crime here is supposedly they try to point to this every day that he does not actually use campaign funds, that he used personal funds. Well, let's get this straight. Suppose Donald Trump had used campaign funds to make a personal expense. They'd be going after him for that. So if they're going to get him going or they're going to get him coming, that is the best proof that this is a politicized sham. Let's go through it piece by piece. If you tell somebody to go buy you a suit and you want to look good on television because that will affect the voters, the way voters vote for you, you know what? They prosecute politicians if they use campaign funds to buy a suit. If they say, go get a haircut, use campaign funds to get a haircut because you want to look good to the voters, they will actually prosecute you for using campaign funds for a personal expense. Yet the entire legal theory of this case, the whole case that Alvin Bragg has brought, depends on one premise for them to charge this as a felony. Is that Donald Trump somehow should have used campaign funds to make an allegedly personal payment. Yet if he had done that, their case against him would be even stronger. This is garbage. That is the best proof that you have, that if they're going to get him going or get him coming, it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. This is a sham. This is not the United States of America. This is some third-rate banana republic. If this were happening in another country, we would be laughing at them as a sham democracy. I am ashamed as an American citizen to sit here in a courtroom watching the former leader of the free world, and let's be honest, likely next leader of the free world sitting with the indignity in this dingy third-rate courtroom with fourth-rate fourth rate prosecutors and a fifth-rate lawyer on the stand as a witness who actually is violating attorney-client privilege left and right. Nobody's even talking about that. So this is a shame, shame on the spirit of our country's history, but we will get through it and be stronger because you know who ultimately actually cast the vote on this case? It's not just the jurors in that jury box. It's every one of you at home. It's every American who votes this November to say no to the weaponization of justice. And if you're at home, you may say, you know what, I don't agree with everything Donald Trump's ever said. You know what, I may not agree with some of his policies even, even though they were great policies for four years. But you do agree, whether you are Democrat or Republican or black or white or gay or straight or man or woman, that our justice system should be blind to politics. That regardless of whether your last name is Biden or Trump, Regardless of whether you've been a politician or not, you get a fair shake in our legal system. And when you have a prosecutor who campaigned on the pledge of going after Trump and then keeps his campaign pledge, when you have a judge whose kids are collecting money from Democratic operatives by fundraising off the very trial that that judge is presiding over, and then telling the U.S. president that he's subject to gag order, that he can't talk about it, that is not justice. That is a bastardization of what this country was founded on. And I'm here... And all of us are here as friends of Donald Trump, supporting him in our personal capacity, sharing our opinions. That's why we're here today. But I hope every American at home who isn't able to be in that courtroom 
is able to see what's actually happening there, and when you do, we will have a landslide of historic proportion this November if every American understands the injustice that's playing out in that courtroom today. So may God bless our country. I pray for our future, and let's pray for our country being stronger on the other side of this disgusting sham politician prosecution. Doug, uh, close us out. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Vivek. Thank you, Congressman. Uh, in closing, I just want to double down on that. All right, so that is Governor Burgum, and he's come up for a second time at the mic just to thank everybody for being there. Vivek Ramaswamy, the last time I saw him speak was the eve of the primary in New Hampshire. People started voting 30 minutes after that event that Donald Trump had. Nikki Haley had one. They were both at night. And I haven't seen him speak since, and I will tell you this. Between him and Tim Scott, the president has some strong surrogates. Uh, the Vivek Ramaswamy came to play, as we like to say, and this group is showing up for the president. Now, 